since my friend and I were emailing back and forth between different cities. And the last email I got was just, uh, as you usually do when you're casually talking to people, you know, discussing the weather, meaningless <coughs> stuff like that. Uh, the last email I got was just, blue skies here, safe travels. So I replied back with well, one, much longer than the email I got. Blue skies bear gently, sliding softly down, swaddled in all the names of the sea breeze, your words, a traveler's shield, and tuck them gently with the green webbed concrete at the entrance to the closed rest stop on I-10 West, interred with the bones of the picnic tables, ashes of decayed cigarettes ground into earth, with the tire dust of an army of cars marching west through long decades, leaving scattered exoskeletons of cockroaches bloated with picnic sandwich crumbs and drunk on Dr. Pepper, and the scattered starlight of broken beer bottles buried under the cover of dirt and weeds, sheltered in the tangled arms of oaks, waiting well back of the growling highway to receive a traveler's blessing in a place where travelers are no longer welcome. Safe travels. <laughs> My friend, being an attorney, wrote back that he was now entitled to royalties. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, this one is called The Movement of Stars Across the Firmament. Leaning west out of rising star, our own slowly dying star crests the firmament, and, calling, flings the light of a million long dead and nameless stars against the pond's rippled slate, silvering the birch's leaning trunk. The horizon bemuses us with this perception of rising and falling. Inside our terrarium, the view from the center of things is of movement along a simple arc, a perspective that makes sense only from the dirt looking up. Imagine instead a disinterested spectator sipping iced tea on God's front porch, stopping by to sit an age or two, boots up, might remark in passing, on the billiards of rock and gas rolling elliptically in four dimensions across a felt-covered nothing. Oh. <laughs> Next up, we have Joanne Holliday. She is a poet and essayist and has recent work in Borderlands Texas Poetry Review, the Rio Review, and Texas Poetry Calendar. And her poem is the week of August 7th. the freeway, slow down. You'll see them standing alone in the narrow space beyond the guardrail, 18 wheelers rumbling 30 feet below. Look at them, their searing eyes, matted hair, wizened faces, wearing tattered jeans and holding cardboard signs. One was young when I first saw him, baby-faced, fair, and blonde, some mama's sweet boy. He disappeared one day. Six months later, when he returned, his skin was ruddy from sun and alcohol, and he walked a drunken shuffle. Midday, they rest in front of the shell station, the lucky ones drinking malt liquor from paper bags. The bearded one is always dozing, Rib cage rising, falling, an ancient heavy lidded lizard under the scorching sun. Mm -hmm. um, also, on a lighter note, um, I'm fascinated by seasons and um, in particular spring. So, this is called early spring. Wide, untouched, snowy expanse, finely sifted sugar awaiting a message from nature. Undulating wind ridges, soft rabbit paws, jaybird glyphs, and dainty deer tracks compose a divine poem and power. Deer inhale the icy air, their ears alert, 
um, as they listen below the surface. A deep running creek promises sustenance, and this inkling of spring beckons the writing of a new season. Okay, and my uh, poem calendar, which I think wins the prize this year for being the longest poem. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I, I wouldn't have been accepted if it had gone on to the next page. Oh, yeah. Forget yeah. it. One more, one more line. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, it's entitled uh, La Lengua. Ai! This language asks so much of me. The professora says, don't speak English. Then ask me nosy questions. Cuantos años tienes? Cuantos personas hay en su familia? Donde vive usted? Then I learn el carro for car. And he met a side relief. But then she says, el coche. Or maybe it's carro in Mexico and coche in South America. Quien sabe? Sometimes I reluctantly speak. She nods her head to encourage me. I think, yes, I know you now. I trust you. But then she replies as if she's on speed. <laughs> La lengua takes off like a Mexico City cabbie, careening off sidewalks, radio blaring mariachi music. When mixed with diesel fuel, it leaves me breathless. I've wandered Spanish-speaking cities, asking directions, consulting my map, unable to distinguish derecho from a la derecha. <coughs> One time, I ended up at a papeleria instead of the panaderia. <laughs> What's a woman to do with a language like that? But what can I say? I can't stay away. Next summer, I'll be eating black beans with every meal. Me gusta frijoles negros, gracias, I'll say to our host with a smile on my face. Or is it me gustan? But late each night, my husband and I close the door on that foreign world and whisper sweet nothings in our own native tongue. But just when I thought it was safe to relax, I long to hear te amo. <laughs> I know we have said this already, but if teaching has taught me anything, eating yourself is a good idea. Uh, so the next calendar deadline is January 15th. <laughs> and we do, as, as Joanne sort of alluded to, we do have a line limit. We are pretty strict about that. Um, all the guidelines are available at dosgatospress.org. Please follow them all, because we can take maybe a third of what we get in terms of space versus people submitting, so if you don't follow the guidelines, we will be sad. <laughs> um, but please send us your work. We're really looking forward to reading it. We've already started looking at what's come in, and um, it's great. So, Our next reader is Jill Wiggins, who is the author of two chapbooks, Lemon Curd and Street Scenes. Her poems have appeared in Poetography 1 and 2, Feeding the Crow, Diverse City, and several editions of the Texas Poetry Calendar. Oh, uh, please, the week of September 25th. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for this, so forgive me. But I'm very pleased to be here. This poem was originally, the title was its first line, and to give it a place in Texas, I entitled it Aransas Bay. But imagine the title of the first line. Catching fish jumping is tricky. A splash as the surface breaks. By the time you turn to look, it's over. Seabirds with their sharp eyes seem to know where to look, skimming and scooping to catch fish on the fly. Once or twice, I'm lucky, happen to look at the right spot and catch one or two leaping fish with my eyes. Mm -hmm. I'll go to my blog and find a poem, so I do have another one. Uh, this is called Guest Room, and just a little 
uh, not backstory, but forward story. After I wrote this poem, my granddaughter came to live with us, so we had to completely convert the room to something more suitable for a child. <laughs> it's quite comfortable if the severed heads and weaponry don't disturb you. <laughs> the knives and guns are plastic, the heads paper mache. Kevin, the skeleton, is friendly, though he once scared a child out of her pale skin. Don't mind the straight jacket hanging, hanging in the window, the Zorro hat, Lady Godiva wig, life-size <coughs> dummy, or the Elvis jumpsuit in the closet. Really, it's quite comfortable. Come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>